Good morning. Thank you again for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be with you. I will talk today about a range of motion and what are, uh, how to improve outcome. Uh, I have some disclosure completely corrupted, but I will try to remain as honest as possible. You will find more information on the participative and um, free website, teaching website called bmed.com. Uh, there is a wiki and everything is already written. So why should we change from a 155 to a 135? Why the design has to involve? Because uh, we had some problem in the past. For example, we observed nudging in 88% of the cases, but also limited range of motion, poor function, dislocation, acromal fractures, and neurological lesions. So this is why we thought that it was important to change the design in order to decrease the rate of complication. And you can do this on the glenoid side with lateralization, eccentricity, glenosphere size, but also on the human size with the stem geometry, the inclination, uh, inlay, flush lay on the system and the polyethylene insert. So the aim of this presentation is to evaluate the advantages and inconvenience of different rival short anthroplasty design and to provide recommendation accordingly. So let's talk now about glenoid offset, meaning the lateralization on the glenoid side. So the initial Gramon prosthesis had a um, straight SEM, but also a central genosphere with a medialized central rotation. So this was what we called a medial glenoid, medial humerus. A component is lateralized if it has at least five millimeters of lateralization compared to the um, Gramont design. This remained medialized compared to the native glenomial, glenohumeral joint. Uh, you can obtain lateralization with either bone or metal. And lateralization will improve range of motion stability. Theoretically, the ideal lateralization is between 5 to 10 millimeters. Clinically, however, it does not seem so important. The glenosphere eccentricity, this is another very important factor. Inferior eccentricity will reduce the severity of scapular notching and it will also maximize the range of motion by increasing the subacromal space. You can also put a posterior inferior eccentricity, and in this case, this will as well improve extension, and probably that extension is really important for internal rotation and in the back. The ideal amount of, uh, based on clinical evidence is around 2.5 uh, millimeters. Uh, I will show you that after five millimeters, um, uh, inferior eccentricity is not so is not so good. Let's talk about now glenosphere size. Um, with small glenosphere, you will increase abduction and external rotation at 90 degrees of abduction. With larger glenosphere, 39-42, you will improve rotation elbow at side and decrease capillar notching. But remember that larger glenosphere are more difficult to implant. This will limit abduction because the glenosphere push the humerus against the acromion. You may have problem of overstuffing, uh, over avulsion of the tuberosity, and also you may have a greater polyethylene volume loss. Uh, now stem geometry. So we move to the humerus. Uh, we have now curved stem that has, compared to Gramo stem, a, a lateralization or an offset of 7 mm. This improves the mechanics of the remaining rotator cuff and the deltoid musculature. Um, and this will allow you to compensate for severe medialization on the glenoid side. This is an example. The surgeon only rely on glenoid lateralization, so he put a huge graft on, on the glenoid side. It had to do a, an osteotomy of the cricoid process to have an access, a better access to the glenoid. And he, he, did, he, he has not done any lateralization on the human side using a straight SEM. And what happened? The long, the long peg is not even in the native glenoid and consequently he observed loosening. So 
um, glenoid migration. So I think it's really important to share the pain and to let it lateralize. If, if you have a big medialization, a little bit on the glenoid side and a little bit on the humeral side using a curved stem. What about now neck shaft angle? This is important um, because it influences arm length, but not lateralization. This is a study that we published in 2015, and you see that between a 155 and a 135, there was only two millimeters of lateralization. So, it neck shaft angle influences distalization, but not really lateralization. With a high neck shaft angle, you will increase abduction by 100% and increase external rotation at 90 degrees of abduction. But low neck shaft angle will increase adduction, external rotation outside, and extension that is important for internal rotation and in the back, and also tuberosity healing. But this will reduce contact area and increase the maximum con um, contact stress up to 300%. Onlay versus inlay, the onlay compared to an inlay 155 will increase human offset by 6.6 mm. Um, you will observe a 10 mm increase in distalization compared to an inlay humer uh, humerus. So the role on, on range of motion is not so clear, but we found that to have an only system that will provide lateralization and distalization increase the rate of acromial fracture. The problem is most of the data that I just present you are based on computed modeling with very few scapula. However, we are all different and we have different anatomy. So what is true for the scapula on the left is probably true, not true for the scapula on the right, and this is two scapula of human living actually on Earth. So this is the dispersion of 10,000 scapula, and what we did, we did a mathematical regression, and with these 10,000 scapula, we transform it into seven scapula that represent the, the 10,000 ones, and we did different measurement, and we found very in interesting data. So de depending of lateral offset, inferior offset, and posterior offset. If you want to know what is the best design for abduction, you see that it's almost the same. It doesn't change a lot. But for adduction, this is completely untrue. The design has really a clear importance for um, adduction. And the problem is when you take everything into account, you don't understand anymore because there are too many possibilities around 40,000. So we try to analyze, and I'm going to talk now about global range of motion. What were the influence of different um, factors like glenosphere size? In the middle, you will have inferior eccentricity, and on your right, you will have lateralization on the glenoid side. And if I'm talking about scapular size, glenoid and scapular size, you see that increased gl uh, glenosphere size will improve global range of motion. You will improve uh, range of motion if you have an eccentricity, but after five millimeters it decreases, and it's the same with um, lateralization of the glenoid. It's okay, and this improves up to 10 millimeters, and then you have either a plateau or a drop. And what is true for the glenoid and scapular side is also true for the critical shoulder angle, so improvement with uh, glenosphere side, improvement with lateral uh, distalization, eccentricity up to 5 millimeters, and then there is a drop, and increase with uh, increase range of motion up to 10 millimeters and then you have a drop and it's the same with the scapular neck angle exactly the same with the scapular neck length so if you summarize everything the inferior position seems to be the most important factor it's more important that lateral uh, positioning of the glenosphere and the glenosphere signs so the most important factor is inferior eccentricity, but don't go more, don't uh, put more than five millimeters. So the take home message is it, we are now able to analyze precisely the best configuration for a specific morphology. 
Inferior centricity is more important than naturalization and glenosphere size for the global range of motion. We need to analyze it more precisely, for example, for interrotation. This is something that we are doing, but as I said, there are a lot of combination and it's difficult to um, it's difficult and long to do all these analyses. So the solution is probably uh, in the future the artificial intelligence that will tell us for a specific anatomy what is the best design. So to summarize, we have an optimal compromise in range of motion for primer, prim, uh, primary rational retroplasty without bone loss with a lateralized glenoid with a low neck shaft angle and probably something like is between an inlay and a flush lay uh, only concept, what we call flush lay. So it's a lateral glenoid with an intermediate humerus. All prosthetic design should be considered on a case-by-case -case basis to optimize outcome and artificial intelligence is clear in the future. Thank you for attention and if you love good science like in your congress, don't forget the next Valise Shorter course uh, in April 2022. If you can't tra travel, there will be either a multiplex or e-congress on BMED. Thank you so much.